When we talk about gold, viewers have to understand that there are really two different prices for gold. There's the price you pay when you go into a gold bullion dealer and you buy a bar of gold. And there's the price that you see on the comics, which is a paper exchange for gold. Today, in mid-2015, as I'm recording this, if you were to walk into a gold bullion dealer and try to buy a solid bar of gold, you will pay one of the highest premiums ever in respect to that bar of gold. The reason being is there just isn't that much gold out there. On the other hand, on the comics, if in the middle of the night somebody, a speculator or investor in an institution drops $100 million or $200 million worth of paper gold, it's going to bring the price of gold down. Looking at the, the supply and demand situation of gold, because in the end of the day, regardless if it's paper gold or real gold, the, the, the regression to the mean by the supply and demand equation is what's going to matter. And we look at starting with the supply, we see that in the United States, U.S. gold miners have produced 11% less gold in the first quarter of 2015 than they did in the first quarter of 2014. Canada is a major gold producer, is producing less gold. South Africa, another major gold producer, is producing less gold. And the reason that's happening is that as gold fell from $1,900 an ounce in 2011 to $1,100, $10,050 today, mines cut back on their exploration programs. As they cut back on their exploration programs, we have less gold today that's being mined. If we move now to the demand side of the equation, we see that central banks purchased in the first quarter of 2015 119 tons of gold. That is the 17th consecutive quarter that central banks have purchased gold. Russia on its own in the month of June bought 25 tons of gold. That makes Russia the world's sixth largest hoarder of gold. If we look at the consumer side, we see that in India in the first quarter of 2015, they bought 15% more gold than they bought in the first quarter of 2014. And even China, which has a, a slowing economy compared to the way it used to grow, we see that in the first quarter of 2015, Chinese consumers imported about the same amount of gold that they brought in in the first quarter of 2014. Over a five-year average, they actually imported 15% more gold in the first quarter of 2015. Moving domestically into the United States, we see that the U.S. Mint during the month of June sold 76,000 ounces of gold in American Eagle coins. That's a 250% increase from May of 2015. So this, the, the, the demand and the supply where you have such a strong demand happening and the supply is actually contracting for those two reasons, I believe that the prices that we see in the market for gold will only increase in the months ahead.